This lesson will show how to graph y equals secant x over the closed interval from negative 360 degrees to positive 360 degrees. To better understand the graph, it's important to remember that secant x is equal to one divided by cosine x, and since division by zero is undefined, where the cosine function is equal to zero, the secant function is undefined, and the graph will have a vertical asymptote. Similarly, where the cosine function is equal to one, since reciprocal of one is one, the secant function value is also one, and where the cosine function is equal to negative one, so is the secant function value, because negative one is the reciprocal of negative one. So let's take a look at the graph using desmos.com. Actually, before we graph, let's take a look at the settings by clicking on the wrench in the upper right-hand corner. Notice how I have the mode set to degrees, I have the interval for the x-axis going from negative 400 degrees to positive 400 degrees with a step of 45 degrees, and the interval for the y-axis is from negative seven to positive seven with a step of one. Let's go ahead and close this, and now let's take a look at the graph of y equals secant x. You may notice that the period is the same as the period of the cosine function, which is 360 degrees. However, the secant function does not have an amplitude because there is no minimum or maximum function value because the graph goes down forever and up forever. And now let's make some connections between the graph of the secant function and the graph of the cosine function. Let's go ahead and turn the secant function off and now we will graph y equals cosine x. And again, since secant x is equal to one divided by cosine x, where the cosine function value is equal to zero, the secant function is undefined and the graph has a vertical asymptote which means the graph of the secant function has a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 270 degrees, x equals negative 90 degrees, x equals 90 degrees, and x equals 270 degrees. Let's go ahead and graph these vertical lines. And now let's identify the points on the graph where the cosine function is equal to positive one. That would be at the high points on the graph where these three points. And again, wherever the cosine function value is one, so is the secant function value, which means these three points are on the graph of the secant function. Similarly, where the cosine function value is negative one, the secant function value is also negative one, and cosine is equal to negative one at the low points on the graph of the cosine function, which would be these two points. So just knowing this information, we can now make a nice graph of the secant function, because we know it's going to pass through these five points and approach the vertical asymptotes. Let's look at that graph again. And now if we did want to find some more points on the graph of the secant function, once again we can use the fact that the cosine function values and secant function values are reciprocals of one another. For example, the cosine of 60 degrees is equal to 1 half, which gives us this point on the graph of the cosine function, and therefore the secant of 60 degrees must be equal to the reciprocal of one half, which is equal to two over one or two, which gives us this point on the graph of the secant function. Similarly, the cosine of negative 60 degrees is equal to one half, which gives us this point on the graph of the cosine function, and therefore the secant of negative 60 degrees must be equal to the reciprocal of one half or two, which gives us this point on the graph of the secant function. Using this relationship between the cosine function values and secant function values can be helpful to find additional points on the graph of the secant function if graphing by hand. I hope you found this helpful.